Okay, so our next speaker is uh, um, Jose Morales Escalante, um, and he's going to talk about DG schemes for collisional plasma models. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so a more precise title for the talk would be collisional electron transport. Uh, the context is not exactly plasmas, but semiconductors, yet I'm going to make some comparisons with co uh, no collisional plasma, and I'll make a comparison with collisional, sorry. <laughs> okay. So the actual context is uh, electron transport in semiconductors. Um, so essentially the difference between a uh, metal and a semiconductor is uh, the degree of conductivity of the electrons. Um, it ha is related to the energy gaps. In the metals you pretty much have uh, an overlapping of the bands and so you can transition between the uh, electron and valence bands. In the semiconductor there's a given gap which doesn't give that much conductivity. Um, and also basically what you have in semiconductors is electrons running through a material. So the material can be silicon, can be some other alloy, perhaps more complex. Uh, the idea is that you have a background lattice and there are going to be collisions of the charge carriers which in this case are the electrons with that lattice and, th and that is the way the collisions are going to come in our model. So yeah, the, the problem is collisional transport in the context of semiconductors. There is a certain periodicity for a given kind of materials. Uh, in the case of silicon, you have this periodic structure in the position space which translates to a periodic structure in the momentum space. Uh, that's going to be very useful because in a phase space formulation in the Boltzmann equation, we're going to use as a momentum variable the crystal momentum which is related to this periodicity and that's how the Boltzmann formulation comes from uh, for this problem. So, yep, we have a collisional problem of electron transport in the context of semiconductors. Uh, we use the Boltzmann equation to model it. It's a phase space formulation where the, you have the position and then the crystal momentum as I was mentioning related to the periodicity. There's a transport part very similar to what you would have in plasmas. This is uh, kind of like a generalized electron velocity. It's a model that comes from the energy bands of the material. Uh, you also have the electric field. So up to the transport part on the left hand side, it's very similar to a transport model. Um, well, here what you have in the right hand side are the collisions. So Boltzmann equation needs a balance between the transport and the collisions. Strictly speaking, for a semiconductor, what you have is a given scattering kernel. Uh, for a problem, it's going to be the interactions of the electrons with the material, with the lattice. And this term comes from the Pauli exclusion principle. So you have a gain and loss integrals uh, where you transition from one state K prime to state K. This is the probability of being in the state K prime, and this is the probability of not being in the state K. So that's Pauli. Uh, we'll use a simpler collision operator, though. And this is the loss of particles from the transition to the state K to the 1K prime. So, yep, the transport part is pretty much a Hamiltonian system, and that's very well studied. Um, you have the electric field, which is um, the force in this case, um, and you also have it coupled to Poisson equation because essentially when you have this electric field, you have the charges moving, they change their position, that changes the density, and that also, as well, that self consistent part of the potential uh, changes the electric field. So, <coughs> you can see that it has a lot of similarities with the models that you guys use in plasmas. Uh, specifically for a model, what we will use uh, for the case of low densities, you can disregard the other factor in the collision integral that I was showing. And, well, let's see. Yeah. So, you can work with a collision operator that is linear, as in this case. Um, you can have the gain and loss and the particular collisions that we're going to work on as I was mentioning is transitions in energy due to the collisions of electrons with phonons of the material. Uh, so as you can see there is an acoustic part where there is a jump uh, that gives the same energy in a different momentum state and there are jumps in energy for uh, um, for an energy quantity of h bar omega. And well, for this kind of collision operator, although it's very complicated because you have the Dirac delta in which you have like these localized energy transitions, you can prove that the Maxwellian is a formula, um, it's pretty much like the equilibrium solution of the problem. <coughs> so, a brief survey of the method is traditionally this equation for electrical engineer has been solved by Monte Carlo. It's very traditional. Uh, it can allow to work with several scattering operators uh, in that context they use different scatterings than the one that we're considering right now. Um, but they have a problem maybe with control boundary conditions and also it's hard to resolve uh, the PDF for the whole time evolution of transits. So um, there's a given line of work in which uh, people try to solve Bolt Boltzmann deterministically 
uh, it's an alternative method. Uh, you pretty much get in the PDF and the time evolution. Um, just a brief summary of the work. I mean, kind of like the first works were with top point finite difference by Fatemi and Ode, and also a paper by Majorana and Pidatela. Uh, then there is the work of Carrillo, Gamba, Majorana, and Shu with a Winnow scheme, awaiting an essential non oscillatory. There's also kind of a school of people that work in the microelectronics department in TUV that work with the spherical harmonics expansion for the Boltzmann equation, uh, and they do that formulation for the Boltzmann, and then they make a given truncation. And then, um, with the line of work of my former uh, PhD advisor and her collaborators, uh, Chen Gamba, Marianne, and Shu, they use this continuous galera key in focusing on the transport part of the, uh, of the plasma or the electron transport. So, the features uh, in a summary I mean, there's a limit in time, but um, I'll mention the thing. It's easier to treat boundary conditions. Um, DG is a method that was designed actually for neutron transport, uh, and it was invented in the National Lab. So, it's a method that is very well suited for transport problems and for hyperbolicity and discontinuous solutions. So it is very adequate for the transport part of our problem. And the other feature is how to treat uh, the electron phonon collisions in our problem. So for this particular uh, presentation, we use a set of coordinates that is also part of the work of my advisor and her collaborators, where you include uh, the energy as one of the coordinates for the momentum and that lets the, the treatment of the collision operator to be way simpler. So there's a reduction in the collisional integral. <coughs> okay, so for details, well, uh, we use a given energy band model. It's pretty much, um, well, it's an analytical model but it tries to be like a first order variation in the probabilicity of, uh, if you had alpha equal to zero, this would be the velocity as you guys use it, right? It would be proportional to k squared. Uh, so the energy would be like the kinetic energy, right? And be squared over two. Um, you have this energy normalized. Uh, you have this uh, momentum description into the energy variable, uh, which is over here, which is related by this analytical model to the norm of the momentum, and then some angular variables which give you the direction. So it's for the momentum, energy, and angles. Um, and with this set of coordinates, what you do is that you transform the Boltzmann equation uh, to this curvilinear set of coordinates, which include the energy. You also have like this, okay, this transport part in the left hand side, the collision in the right hand side. Uh, well, formally speaking, uh, this is the representation of the velocity in the new coordinates. Um, and this term is pretty much the transport of the electric field in the set of curvilinear coordinates as well. Uh, the advantage of this, um, transformation of coordinates is that when you check on the collision operator you have jumps in energy. And in that way uh, pretty much many of the integrals, particularly in the loss integral, they get uh, reduced very simply. This is just the Jacobian of the transformation with the translated energy. Um, this accounts for the whole loss integral over here. And you still have to couple it to Poisson. So, okay, this is kind of like the math of the problem. Anyway. <coughs> As I was saying, um, well pr probably several people are uh, familiar with discontinuous Galerkin. Uh, we work um, for the setting of the problem actually with a Q space which is piecewise linear in the position and piecewise constant in the momentum. The important part is that it's a Q space and I'll let you know in a second why that is important for the work. Um, so anyway, um, the DG formulation as probably a lot of people know here is you multiply your transport or your Boltzmann equation by a test function and integrate by parts and in this case you'll get several boundary integrals by this IVP and uh, you have to solve this. <coughs> so, <coughs> well, anyway, the method can be mm, expressed as an algorithm like this. What you want to do, well, you need to compute the charge density because from that it comes electric field by Poisson and that you solve by local discontinuous Galerkin and another method. Once you have the electric field, you solve the transport part of the Boltzmann equation uh, by discontinuous Galerkin, so you get your set of ODEs to do the time evolution and that you can solve by Ronke Kuda. But this is the iteration of these four steps to get the evolution of the, uh, well, of the algorithm pretty much. Now, uh, to the meat of the, of the talk. Um, so, um, in previous work uh, for, say, particular devices like a MOSFET, uh, which is a uh, semiconductor device. Uh, the reflection boundary conditions that are used are usually uh, specular reflection. In this case, um, well, what we will study is the inclusion of uh, diffusive reflection or mixed reflection as a model of the roughness of the surface 
to um, well, see the differences in the predictions in the computational uh, simulations. Anyway, uh, maybe this is an overload of information, but uh, some common charges that are, uh, or some common conditions that are used uh, in the context of uh, electron transport in semiconductors is neutral charges, uh, which pretty much uh, preserves the balance between the density and the doping uh, profile in uh, the endpoints, what is called the source and the drain. Then, okay, you have your choice of reflection boundary conditions. Uh, it's important to mention that we are kind of working in insulating devices, right? So uh, the electrons cannot go uh, outside the device uh, by assumption. So you have to satisfy a zero flux condition that tells you what uh, that is incoming in the boundary is going to reflect. So that's going to be important for the formulation of mixed uh, reflection with non constant probability in a second. And just for an example of the Poisson, I mean, for this device, what you have usually is a given potential in the source, in the drain, maybe in the gate. Uh, actually, what we will uh, present for the study is much simple. I mean, we have done simulations with MOSFETs, but we care about like uh, silicon in two dimensions where we have uh, reflection conditions in this part. Uh, we won't need the potential at the gate, so it's just like Neumann conditions uh, in this part of the reflecting boundary. <coughs> okay. So, well, specular reflection, everybody knows from physics, is just like what comes in going in a given boundary reflects. It's, uh, this is a mathematical formulation of doing this just by using the electron velocity. So it looks complicated, but it's uh, very simple. Uh, for diffusive reflection, what you have, okay, this is the condition of uh, the position and the momentum at what is called the Neumann uh, inflow boundary, which it depends on the outflow. And your condition is that it's going to be like a Maxwellian. And so, well, okay, that's a good way to put it. But what is sigma or and c? Uh, so sigma is related actually to the outflow integral, but what we will present later, uh, even for the case of mixed reflection, which is a combination of diffusivity and specular, is that it's a function and parameter to satisfy the zero flux condition. So, I mean, maybe it has a complicated form, but everything comes from uh, that condition and the solution to the problem, and it's kind of easy to understand that way. But the assumption is that uh, the PDF at this boundary is uh, proportional to a Maxwellian. Okay, so the mixed reflection is a convex combination of a specularity and diffusivity. Um, it can have a well, non constant parameter. Actually, we'll present uh, results with a model in which the probability depends on K. And so, okay, um, I have to mention that uh, this kind of problem or these kind of conditions is very well studied in the context of kinetic theory of gases uh, for Boltzmann for gases or well it, this is not an extensive but it's like uh, just a short list of references. Churchiniani studies the reflection uh, boundary conditions in diffusive and uh, specular. Also Sonnet, um, there's a recent paper of uh, Brule, uh, Charlie and uh, in which they study the gas surface interaction and there's also well a following paper by the Struch group in which they study the same problem. Um, it's actually uh, very neat what they do. Uh, mathematically, they study like different kind of con uh, boundary conditions, like diffusivity, anisotropic uh, scattering, or isotropic scattering, sorry, and the specularity. And they work with the kernels, uh, and they derive uh, some of the conditions from them. From, but the work is more about the kernels of the collision operator in that paper. Uh, however, at least in the context of uh, semiconductors uh, on electron transport. Uh, the study of the uh, surface roughness and diffusive boundary conditions is not uh, uh, well that um, extensive. So I'm giving some papers. Uh, well, the paper by Fuke, uh, they essentially study the mixed reflection with a constant parameter p. Uh, then there is a paper of Green and Soffer in which they study a probability of a specularity, which I mean, if I go here. In this condition, you have the probability of reflecting specularly, and here the probability of reflecting diffusivity. So, uh, in the particular case of the software model, what they do is that they assume that you have a rough surface in which you have like a random variation in the uh, in in the roughness, and from that they derive um, by physics uh, this probability model. Uh, there's also a paper by Churchin and uh, Lemberborn in which they study diffusive and uh, specular conditions uh, and also well, some other stuff. And there's a mention in the book of Jungle, which is a reference textbook for Boltzmann for semiconductors in which well, they mention the diffusive uh, boundary conditions, yet uh, it's just a mention and uh, no more. Anyway, so the zero flux condition that I was talking about before 
Essentially, you have a given boundary, you have the electrons inside in, and what goes in must come back, right? So it's very simple. This is the current, this is the normal. I mean, just think of a constant boundary. Like here, you have the vertical y normal. And then you divide into what is called the outflow and the inflow boundary. So you have the inciting part and the uh, outgoing part. And your PDF at this boundary must be the same. It's just uh, keeping balance, right? Well, it looks very simple, actually, for the specular, it's simple, but it helps you to understand the mixed reflection problem with uh, non constant probability because your solution to um, your boundary condition is going to come from that. Anyway, so. Well, for the specular case, it's physically very intuitive and almost obvious that uh, the way the specular uh, boundary condition is formulated, you have your k momentum and then it incites back. <coughs> because the way the PDF is defined on the boundary, there's going to be a balance. And it's again the same physics. For diffusivity, um, I was trying to give you kind of like the answer of the movie before. Okay, you have your Maxwellian and you have this function sigma and the parameter. Uh, the idea is that if you study, well, the zero flux condition with this uh, boundary condition, so this is the Neumann inflow boundary, this is the integral over the outflow, <coughs> and you consider the zero flux condition, uh, essentially this function and this parameter are chosen precisely to balance the zero flux at that boundary. So, I mean, here is the math, I'm not going to go over the details, but uh, you have this integral, which is pretty much the integral of the current over the outflow part, that's part of the way it's chosen like that. Then you have a constant, um, might close sometime, five minutes, okay, so I have to go way faster. Um, okay, so the constant is chosen like that. Anyway, so for, that is very well studied, if, at least for Boltzmann for gases, the, that is a classical result. So I'm not presenting here something new. Um, what I'm presenting as kind of like new is that for this problem where you have an angularly dependent momentum, you can do, you can find your C prime and phi prime uh, that satisfy the same relation. So this would be the mixed reflection boundary condition and you have the probability of a specularity depending on the angle and this is the probability of diffusivity with any function that depends on the momentum, right? Well, I mean, probably there are going to be some assumptions, but anyway, from the zero flux condition, if you pose the problem of finding the function and parameters such that the zero flux condition is satisfied, it follows from the same manipulation of integrals that you'll get the satisfaction of the zero flux. And this defines the C prime as this function and the sigma prime as this whole thing, okay? So that's analytically. Numerically, you can do the same and you just do uh, the projections on the finite element space that you're working on. And the reason you use the Q space uh, for the finite elements is precisely because you're going to do these integrations and you're going to take out some of the terms from the integrals that are just in the momentum, not on the position. So the fact that you work in a tensor product space lets you take some of the terms out of the momentum integral and do an exact uh, solution to the problem in the numerical case that works the same as the analytical one. So, okay, this is just a detail of the implementation. Maybe it's not that important. Uh, for the mixed, <coughs> you have your projection of your uh, uh, mixed reflection boundary condition. You do the same. You compute your sigma integral the way it is defined numerically as the solution. Um, and then, well, you'll find the C as well as the solution to the problem in the numerical case. Uh, okay and so on. Anyway, so, well, it's a talk on plasma, so I'll present at least some comparisons with collision and plasmas with the collision. So for 2D bulk silicon, we have a Maxwellian as initial state. Um, we have pretty much, okay, so this is the situation. I have a difference of potential. Here I have charge neutrality. Uh, I analyze three conditions, but okay, this is charge neutrality. Here I have the reflection boundary condition part and the red is the specular and the other are like uh, either diffusive or mixed reflection. So the first thing is that you can see how the diffusivity alters the density profile close to the reflecting boundaries and by conservation of mass uh, close to the center there is a diminution of the density profile. Okay, I'll talk about this in a sec. Okay, so this is the average velocity. So there's a difference in the velocity predicted by specular reflection. Uh, and the average energy, there's a decrease in the energy uh, with uh, the diffusive reflection boundary conditions. And the electric potential solution is the same. So now I'm doing these slides because I'm comparing the case with, uh, okay, I use charge neutrality, but I, well, couldn't need to do it. I could use, for example, periodic boundary conditions. The reason I'm presenting this is okay, the prediction for the moments uh, are kind of similar, uh, except perhaps for the density. 
in which there's um, lower variation in, in the density close to the boundaries. But uh, well, if I were to analyze the mass uh, evolution over time, um, well, the error after one picosecond, which is important from the physical time simulation point of view, is of 0.2 percent. It's minimal, yet it is not associated to the specular reflection, but to the charge neutrality. It's kind of like an accumulation of the numerical error of both the charge neutrality, which involves an arithmetic uh, division, and uh, then the specular reflection. If I change in the boundaries where I had charge neutrality uh, for periodic boundary conditions, so what flows here then comes back over here, so there's a coupling between the last two uh, cells. Um, well, the mass is conserved perfectly for all the three cases of diffusive reflection and specular. Um, so there's a decrease in energy over here, this part. Uh, and now uh, the last uh, comparison is with collision less electron transport. So here I'm just not going to include the collision part. Uh, so I'm just going to do like the advection, like by a blast up. Um, so here what you can see is um, actually if you compare the energies, uh, well, because you don't have collisions, the energy is much higher for the collisionless case. Uh, there's actually a decrease of the velocity uh, with when you use a specular, uh, sorry, diffusive reflection. So it's more complicated for the case of the velocity. I mean, it happens what you expect on the average energy, but no, not, but um, the density is similar. So anyway, as a conclusion, so this is just a comment I want to make. Um, so, okay, when you include diffusive reflection, you increase the density profile uh, over the close to the boundaries. You have a decrease in average energy, but uh, the situation with the average velocity is more complicated because, okay, without collisions, for the case of the collisionless plasma, okay, you decrease the average uh, velocity. But when you add the collisions, remember that the condition of the diffusive reflection is a condition of the, the momentum, whereas the collisions work with the energy variable. So it's not that simple in to predict what will happen in uh, the diffusive reflection with the average energy. So in, when you add the collisions, actually the diffusive reflection compared to the specular, it's a little bit higher. But uh, well, when you analyze just the collisionless case, uh, it's decreasing. So anyway, um, and this is work in progress with my current uh, postdoc advisor and his collaborator. So uh, this is it. <laughs>